Hello and welcome to another video in the How to Make a Chrome Extension video tutorial series. In this video, I'm going to walk through how to publish the Chrome extension to the web store. But before we can do that, we've got to do some cleanup in our application. One thing we have to do is clean up the console logs that we've got kind of all over the place as a way to debug our application. I've also used very inconsistent coding styles here. In some cases, I have a terminal semicolon ending a line. In other cases, I don't do that. Good programming practice is to have consistent coding styles styles across your application. So that's what we're going to do in this video before publishing to the Chrome extension web store. Let's start by removing all of the console logs that we've got littered throughout the app. I'm going to click the little search icon here on the left hand pane and we're just going to search for console.log. This will highlight all of the occurrences of console log in our entire folder. So we have a bunch here in background.js. Let's just remove them manually. We have some in fetch locations. Let's remove this and we'll keep the error console log. Remove the console result. The FaceTime JavaScript file is a third party library, so I'm going to just leave that as it is. And I am happy with what we have so far. We console log some of the errors, but everything else is pretty much removed. The next thing we have to do is be consistent in our coding schemes. One plugin that I'd like to use is something called Prettier. Prettier basically formats your code according to a certain set of rules that you've created. If you work in a bigger company, they usually give you rules that you can use with your Prettier formatter or your ESLint formatter. In our case, I'm going to create some basic rules for us so that we can use it in this application. To install Prettier, go to the extensions button on the left hand pane and let's search for Prettier. I already have Prettier installed, so once you install it, you'll be able to see this little settings icon. Click on that and click on extension settings. We're going to set some basic coding schemes in here. The first thing I want to do is I want to use tabs everywhere. So I'm going to search for use tabs and then you want to select indent lines with tabs. If you prefer spaces, you can leave this blank. The next thing I want to search for is semicolon. I prefer to use a JavaScript terminal semicolon at the end of every line. Um, if you don't want to use that, that's fine, but I'm going to leave mine checked here. Now, I want to format every file whenever I save it, so I'm going to search for format on save, and let's check this one here, where it says editor format on save, format a file on save. I'm going to check that, and all this means is that whenever I use control save or command save, the default formatter, which in our case will be prettier, will format the file for us. Let's head back to fetch location JS. As you can tell, it hasn't been saved. That's why you see the little circle here. So I'm in this file and I'm going to hit Command S. And if you're on Windows, you just hit Control S and it automatically formats the file for us. We have added the terminal semicolons here. The location endpoint URL has moved to another line. This looks a little weird, but that's mostly because I am zoomed in on my entire window for recording purposes. So it's easier to see. Let's do the same thing in fetch open slots, Command S. And let's do the same thing in background JS. It's nicely formatted in here. Pop-up JS, hit Command S. Even if you don't have anything to save in pop-up, you can just hit Command S and it will automatically format it for you in Create Notification. And we will skip the space-time third-party library. Okay, everything is formatted. We've removed all of the console logs that we don't really want to show up. Now let's move on to publishing this extension on the Chrome Web Store. Let's get our package ready to be uploaded to the Chrome Extension Store. I've navigated to the folder where all all of my code lives and at the root directory I'll right click and compress. You'll be able to compress as well on a Windows machine. The only thing you have to make sure of is that you have the .zip ending extension here and another thing I like to do is also add the version towards the end. After drops I do dash one underscore zero because that is version one and when we want to update this I will call it one underscore one meaning version 1.1. Another thing I want to mention is make sure you just have the essentials in here. If you have any other files, maybe scratch code in here that you aren't using, I would suggest deleting that before uh, creating the zip file to upload. Go to google.com and search for Chrome Web Store Console and let's click the Chrome Web Store Developer Dashboard. Now, before we can get into the Developer Dashboard, we actually have to have an account. You can use any Gmail account that you have, just sign in here and then you will be landed on the dev console. I'm gonna sign in to my email here. I finished logging in and I'm on the developer dashboard. 
we're gonna click new item here. And this is where we will now drag and drop the zip file that we just created. When you drop it into here, it's going to upload and then you'll land on the item webpage. I've navigated to the store listing for global entry drops, which is the package that we just uploaded. On the right hand side, I have the store listing for the official global entry drops that I've uploaded previously, just so that we can walk through this together. So we have the title from package that will be global entry drops and that is specified in your manifest file. The summary is also specified in the manifest file. The description will correspond to this giant thing in the overview. Uh, basically this entire block, including the fact here that I've written, will be written in the description box here. So I'm just going to copy and paste this so we can get an understanding of what that looks like. So just copy and paste this whole thing. Then you can select a category. In my case, I'm going to use search tools. The language is going to be English. The store icon will correspond to the images that we've packaged with the Chrome extension. You'll have to upload that manually here and that will correspond to this icon here at the top left of the store listing. A global promo video is not required, but basically it just is a way to give a rundown of how the application works. On the right hand side here, it's gonna look like this video that I've attached called Global Entry Drops Chrome Extension Demo. At the bottom, you'll see these three dots. These other two here are pictures that I've included as part of the screenshots here. And the first video is just the video in the global promo video. You'll need at least one screenshot, but that's really all you need here. I suggest providing more than one, but my preference is really the promo video. I think that will really help a lot of the users whenever they try to understand how to use Use the application. What I'm going to do now is hit save draft. Once I hit save draft, it's going to have saving item on the bottom and then item saved. Then it doesn't really show you if anything has happened, if anything's been rejected on this page. Uh, the way to see what your errors are is by clicking why can't I submit and in here it'll show you a list of the things that you need to upload or that you need to write prior to submitting for review. So as you can tell here, uh, icon image is missing. I never uploaded an icon. I need a justification for notifications. So all of the permissions that have been specified in the manifest.json all of those permissions need some kind of written justification as to why we need that permission. And I'm going to show you how to do that. It's going to be in the privacy practices tab. At least one screenshot or video is required. We need a single purpose description as well. And we have to accept some policies prior to publishing the item. Hit OK. Let's jump over to the privacy practices. In here, we need a single purpose. That means something that's very basic and easy to understand. I usually suggest maybe one or two sentences of what this application is doing. I wrote something very simple. This application finds the earliest global entry interview that matches the user's criteria. Now that we've got that complete, we need to give a reason as to why we need these permissions for notifications. So I'm just going to put something here, show the user when an interview has been found for the storage, populate the pop-up window with the user's preferences and alarms to run the job in the background of fetching global entry interviews. Uh, for our case, we are not using any remote code. So things that may be streamed in, like if you had a jQuery JavaScript file that you were streaming in from CDN or something like that, you would have to specify that here. If you are collecting any data from the user, like maybe you have Google Analytics in here or something. Um, maybe you have some other ways of recording user data. You have to specify that here. In our case, as you've seen throughout the tutorial, we have zero tracking that's in our app. It's open source. It's totally free of any tracking. We don't have to select any of this for our application. However, if you have your own application that may use one of these, then you may need to select that. Then you have to select uh, all three of these to certify that you are following policy. Now if you hit save draft, it'll tell us that we are missing an icon image and at least one screenshot. Back in store listing, you can upload the store icon here and we also can upload either a video or a screenshot. Once you've uploaded that, then you can hit submit for review. I'm going to drop the 128 extension here, which has been uploaded. And I just took a picture here that I'm going to use as part of one of the screenshots. Now let's hit save draft. Now that we've finished all of the missing sections, we can hit submit for review. When you hit submit for review, it'll tell you that it's going to be in review for some time. And depending on how many permissions you use that may be from one day to maybe three or four days. Um, for my own global entry official application, it takes about 24 to 
48 hours to be approved. Whenever you create your account, you'll need to provide some way that users can contact you. And that's the contact the developer option here. This is not associated with your account that you logged in with. This will be something that you can write into a field. So you don't have to worry about this account being public. It'll just be the field specifically where you list out the email here. If you want to include a website like we have here, just go to store listing. At the bottom here, you can specify whatever the homepage URL is and maybe a Google Analytics ID as well. Once your listing has been approved, if you come over to build and status underneath that, you'll see it listed under published. In our case, it's still unpublished here. So once I actually hit submit for review, it'll show up under draft. If it is unapproved, you'll see it say that it was rejected by the web store and then you can make your changes. Um, it may give you a reason. Sometimes the reason tends to be vague, but it'll give you a general reason as to why it was rejected. One thing I want to point out is that once you have submitted this listing for approval, you cannot cancel it. So once you've hit submit for review, you can't cancel it in process. You have to wait for it to be complete prior to doing any other change. So whatever you do, make sure that you've gotten all of your changes in, that you're 100% sure that you're ready to submit what you've got here in the listing so far. Because once you hit submit for review, you have to wait until it's complete to make any changes or to cancel it. And that is it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe so I know to keep making more of these. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Jerry.